archives. Let's see. All right, can everyone hear me? Yep. All right, let me just take a quick look and see who's here before I turn it over to Victoria.
just a second longer while I verify everybody. Looks like we're just looking for, I think, Pamela. Um, and let me just text her real quickly and then we'll look to get see look to get started. Is Nilesh coming? I know Nilesh is dialed in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm gonna mute for a second while I check for Pamela. Alec. It looks like Pamela might be in. I just saw a new number appear. Okay. Oh yeah. Yep. I think that looks. Yep, that's her number. Okay. All right. With that. Um. With that, I will turn it over to Victoria. Victoria, are you there? Victoria, are you there? Now I am. Thank you, Alec. I was having trouble unmuting. Well, th thank you and good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. So, so once yes. a year, once a year, it's my honor to call the meeting to order. So I'd like to call the meeting to order for the annual organizational meeting. And do I have a motion to open public session? Alec, move uh -huh. in a second. Thank you, Pamela. Look like I had Pamela. Thank you. Um, and now I would like to appoint Rosemary DeVito as district clerk. Ray, if you could take out your oath of allegiance and please read it. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Can you hear me now? Yes. You can hear me, Alec? Yes. Yes, Rose. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I will now take yes. the oath of allegiance for, another, for yet another year. I, Rosemary DeVito, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of district clerk of the Edgemont Board of Education according to the best of my ability. And I will now sign the oath. At this time, I would like to ask Victoria Newell to take her oath of allegiance and uh, read and sign it, please. Yes, thank you, Rosemary. I, Victoria S. Newell, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of superintendent 
of the Edgemont Union Free School District according to the best of my ability. And I will sign. Okay. Thank you, Rose. And now uh, uh, Rose will continue to administer the oaths, um, beginning with Monica Skanga. Okay, so um, I would like to administer the oath to re-elected board member Monica Skanga. Monica, if you don't mind taking out your oath of allegiance and reading it, please. Thank you. I, Monica Skanga, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of trustee of the Edgemont Board of Education according to the best of my ability. And now I will start. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank now you. I would like to have uh, our newly elected board member, Jennifer D. Murray, do the same. Jennifer, welcome. And if you don't mind taking out your oath of allegiance and reading it for us, please. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Yes. I, Jennifer Demeray, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of trustee of the Edgemont Board of Education according to the best of my ability. Yay. Thanks, Jennifer. Congratulations Thank to you. everyone. Thank you, Rosemary, and welcome back, Monica, and welcome, Jennifer. I would now like to invite nominations for the Office of President. Judy? Um, I'd like to nominate Alec for president, um, and I recognize that it is unusual to serve two years in a row, um, but his skills uh, make him uniquely suited to lead us in this coming year. First and foremost um, was his extraordinary dedication to his responsibilities as board president this past year uh, and this past spring in particular. He analyzed and researched data underlying our own budgetary needs and likely spoke with scores of residents individually and patiently. Um, helping each to understand the nuances of the proposed budget. He also carefully crafted a synopsis for presentation at board meetings so that everyone could understand just how tight the proposed budget was and um, ultimately lend enormous support through their votes. As we move forward and need to consider how our district will accommodate the existing and growing enrollment in our buildings, um, Alec possesses the necessary mix of experience and skills, both inter, well, not both, interpersonally, analytically, and financially, uh, to guide us through mm -hmm. the coming year. So, any seconds, I guess? <laughs> Any other nominations? Oh, sorry. Well, for, first I have to ask for other nominations and then we'll get to seconds. <laughs> See, seeing none, um, any further discussion? Any, and uh, a second to that motion? Mariquita? Uh, all in favor? Or, or since there are no other nominations, I guess, um, Alec. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Alec. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Alec. And I Alec. now, um, I hand the uh, virtual ga gavel to Alec. <laughs> thank you, Victoria. And thank you, Judy, for those very kind words. Um, hopefully I will be able to, uh, live up to the um, trust you're putting all putting back in me 
either that or just nobody wanted it. But uh, <laughs> I'll try and think of it as the first. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, the next order on the agenda is um, nomination and election of the uh, vice president. So at this if, time, may I, I may I say something here, Alec? Would you mind reading your oath of allegiance, please? I most certainly would not. Um, okay. So before we move on, mm -hmm. so the president one, not the trustee one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I get the wrong one. Oh, da, 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 da. He clearly wasn't planning on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, I, Alec Clark, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of President of the Edgemont Board of Education according to the best of my ability. Yay! Thank you. I will sign now. Okay. Okay. So. Now that I've already botched the first order of business of my new term, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the next order of business is now to uh, ask for um, nominations for uh, vice president. And uh, I would like to take my um, uh, position as president to throw out the first nomination. Um, I would like to nominate um, Judy Seif to be vice president. Um, Judy in this past year has been just an amazing partner in this role. Um, as she's alluded to, this has been uh, somewhat of a, very much of a different, somewhat of a trying year. And I, I just couldn't imagine any better support from anyone than um, Judy has given, well, not only the last year, but the last four years that we've served together, but especially in this most trying year. So as we face what we know is going to be another unusual and uh, challenging year, um, I can't think of anyone that I think would rather have next to me helping me through this than Judy. So I will first nominate Judy Seif, and I will now open it up to any other um, nominations. Uh, Pamela, do you have your hand up? Okay, maybe a leftover from before. Um, so, hearing no other nominations, uh, do I have a second for the I see Monica. Um, so again, I with no other nominations, I believe Judy is now vice president. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. Judy, would you please read your oath of allegiance? Yes. Um, I, Judy Seif, hereby pledge and declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of vice president of the Edgemont Board of Education according to the best of my ability, and I'm signing it. Thank you and congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. Most of the remaining items here are there are a number of sort of necessary basically reappointments of people to positions for the coming year is there anything in the remaining items uh, e through i that anyone would like to um either discuss, have questions on, or take out separately for a separate vote. Um, Alec, I, I would like to uh, read E separately, read the resolution for E. And oh. I did want to just make um, what one comment. Uh, there were a couple of questions about all, the auditors in general, and um, Sue Shirkin was just going to make a general comment 
about uh, the auditors. Um, so, so maybe we could take E, e separate and then. Of course, of course. So yeah, um, e, e, e separate and then. Um, so um, for E one. E one, sorry, yeah. Okay, for me to read the resolution. Please. Resolve that the Edgemont Union Free School District hereby adopts for all officers and employees of the district coverage provided by Section 18 of the New York State Public Officers Law. This coverage shall supplement and be in addition to the coverage available to such officers and employees by other enactments or from other sources. Have a motion. Do you have any questions or comments? Did, do you want to say more about that, Victoria? No, thank okay. you. Uh, Judy, you had a question, or is that a no? No, that was a motion. Any questions on that? Okay, then do I have a motion to approve? I saw Judy's hand up first. I see Marikita. Uh, all in favor? Um, it is approved. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, maybe if we just um, do, instead of pulling them out separately, just want Sue to, to make a general comment about auditors first, and then we can take them all together. Most certainly. Take it away, Sue. Not yet. <laughs> Can't hear you yet. Oh, I, I'm unmuted. Okay. It's terrible. We all say the same thing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, okay. So let me just go over so it is less confusing for all of us. Um, the school district is audited at a minimum, the district itself, three times a year. We have external auditors that come in for a week in June and a week in July, and they go through and look at at least 10% of everything that we do. They look at all of our payments. They look at the money that comes in. They look at if we're following rules and regulations, and um, they look at our reserves, our certiaries, um, and they are considered the external auditors, and they usually give us an opinion um, at the end of every year, which thankfully every year has been um, very favorable, and they have gone through everything. It's kind of a, a broad stroke audit of all of the things that go on in the office. So then when Rosalind occurred in probably it was about two, the year 2000, maybe 2001, and the school district had, I don't know how many of you have seen that movie on uh, HBO, but, um, <laughs> where they misappropriated all of those funds. Since that time, they a new industry practically has developed, and that is internal auditors. And internal auditors come in once a year to do a risk assessment. They talk to representatives of the board. They talk to everybody in the district that handles money. They talk to almost everybody in the business office. And they assess what kind of risks are out there for us. Most of the time, they're looking at procedures. Are we doing this correctly? Are there enough sign-offs? Are there enough people who have looked at this payment? Um, and they make sure that there is backup for every single payment that we make in the business office. And there are thousands of them every year. So once they do the risk assessment, in uh, the end of June and July, they will come up with some suggestions and we have to write a corrective action plan. They then decide, we all decide together, the audit committee and myself, um, what is a good area for them to do a deep dive. And every year they do some kind of a deep dive on an area where uh, maybe I'm a little concerned about, maybe their board is a little concerned about, uh, something where normally 
we think we might need to tighten up procedures. And so they come in and they spend three or four days um, talking to people and looking at the records they have access to in vision. We have to give them access. So they look at how, if anybody is misusing it, if, um, if people aren't signing in properly or logging out of the system. I mean, if there's any kind of a concern, there's an audit trail. The Envision system um, is our software system that monitors all the financial activities in the district. And there is an audit trail um, into the whole system. And they can just look at one person, type in a number of your, you know, your number and know exactly what you have done. Every time you've gone into the computer, what you've done, if you've written a check, if you've done, it's a very, very tight system. So after they've looked at a particular area, then they're, they make suggestions for improvement, mostly procedural. Really, they've all been procedural, thankfully. And think of better ways to do that. Tighten it up. Maybe you should have a third person involved. Maybe you need somebody else to look at something because they're very concerned about separation of duties. Um, a check comes into the office. One person logs it in. Somebody else writes a receipt for it somebody else puts it into the bookkeeping system and somebody else takes it to the bank. And all of those have to work and the internal auditors are monitoring that all the time. And then we have an internal claims auditor, that's John Tobin company. And the internal claims auditor, his responsibility is to check every single check that is written through accounts payable. They make sure that all of the backup is there, that something is, everything has been counted and approved, that uh, it was ordered properly, that people were doing things in advance, that, that you know someone in the district doesn't call up and do a telephone order. Um, they make sure all of that, and then he looks at, right now it's a he, he looks at everything that Liz gets ready for that check. And those people who have been here and have signed checks in the district realize that the paperwork is about this big. There is backup for everything. And um, Lizzie does a great job with it um, and takes her job very seriously. So we have external, internal, and internal claims auditors, all who are on here to be approved. The only other thing I want to say about it is sometimes the state controller's office also comes into audit. Um, that office has audited us twice in 15 years. They probably try to do it every five or six, seven years. They come in, and the last time they were there, the first time they were there, they were there for eight weeks, just sitting there and going through every single piece of paper what they wanted to look at. And the second time, I think it was a little less than eight weeks. Um, I felt like they were always there. And they <laughs> come in, they plant themselves down, and you don't know about that until they send you a letter that says, oh, good afternoon. This is the internal, you know, the controller's office will be in next week. Uh, and then also we've had TRS audits. So we are really... I don't know how you could get around it or how anybody could do something that is not legal because um, we are audited and checked and double checked from outside sources all the time. So on tonight's agenda, I think there are three auditors to approve the internal auditor, um, the external auditor and John Tobin's office, which comes in and does the internal claims. A little longer than you thought, maybe, but I think that's a good explanation. So everybody <laughs> understands everything that goes on. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Anybody have any questions about it? Okay. Sue, it's like you never left. Never, I know. No, <laughs> I had a good day today, though. <laughs> but, but thank you, Sue, because that was very informative. Okay. If, if you have questions, can always ask. All right. So um, that was that piece. Can we get um, Brian to repeat that? I'm sorry? Can we get Brian to repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I'm all <laughs> taking, taking notes. <laughs> 
going to be a quiz tomorrow. <laughs> um, all right. Is there anything else? I'm sorry. Was there anything else, Victoria, that you wanted to do separately, or anything that any other board member? No, would like that's it. Take separately, or have any questions on? All right. Then, with that, uh, let you. Uh, Uh, propose the remaining item. Great. I'd like to thank you, Alec. I'd like to ask the board's approval of F appointments numbers one through thirty one, G authorizations numbers one through eighteen, H reauthorization of existing policies and district-wide school safety plan number one and I schedule of board of educate board of education regular meetings I one uh, do we have a motion to approve Marakita do I have a second uh, Judy all in favor um, they are all those items are approved so thank you very much um, that actually thank you takes us to the end of our reorganizational meeting so um, for anyone in the audience this is a little different than we usually do but at this point we will now we're going to officially adjourn this meeting and then we will immediately convene the the next regular meeting of the board. So do I have a, a motion to adjourn? Oh, Jennifer, did you have a question before? Hmm? Or is that your chair? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the reorganizational meeting? Um, I see Judy and Monica all in favor. All right, we are adjourned from the July 1st reorganizational meeting. Thank you, everyone. Um, our next meeting comes now. So I um, want to welcome everyone to the uh, regular July 1st meeting of the Edgemont Board of Education. Um, There's no executive order, executive session tonight. So we're going straight into public session. Um, Pull that up. All right, so we have no minutes to approve, no treasurer's report. Wait, um, Alec, since we yes, adjourn, sorry. don't we need to go back into public session or no? Sorry, not sure about the process. Yeah, no, I just, I. Okay. We, we just go straight into public session. Okay. But we may have to have the motion to exit exec into public but since we never went into exec we are but, Got it. but thank all you. right yeah, no, no, it's, uh, okay so let me just check one more thing here and um i'm just looking right now before we get to okay all right so the uh uh, says, um, recognition of community. Um, we have placed the um, in the instructions for this meeting. We, we've placed our usual form up for people that have any questions. Um, so that that form is open. I see there are no questions right now. But um, if people, for example, have uh, questions um, about uh, Dr. Newell's uh, update on the reopening process, you're welcome to enter them now or as you're listening to her, um, listening to her update, and then um, we will look to uh, answer those at the uh, end of the presentation. So uh, no acceptance of gifts to do today, so we now have the superintendent's report. Toria, you want to? say any intro so, um, we're, uh, we're going to try something different um, in in the time of, of get, getting more information out I actually recorded the presentation so 
we will watch the recorded presentation and then that will live on the website and be associated with this board meeting. And then we will be able to push out the presentation. So um, I have to watch myself, which is really going <laughs> to be um, an experience for me, but um, you, Alec, I okay. think you uh, would like showing the presentation. And then obviously we will answer the questions in real time. Uh, and all of the administrators are here. The whole team is here to help with the answering of the questions. All right. So this is about, yep, yeah, it's about the process we're following. All right. So let me share. And are people seeing the uh, beginning of the presentation now? Yes. Okay. Then I will start it. Hello, everyone. The big question on everyone's mind, is school reopening? And if so, what will it look like? I wish I had the answers to those questions, but I certainly don't. But what I'd like to do in this presentation is to tell you all of the thoughtful planning that is going into a potential reopening. We do expect school to reopen, but we won't know for sure until mid-July. In order for public schools to reopen in New York State, New York State must be in phase four, and we expect that the governor will make that announcement uh, approximately July 14th, July 15th. As I already mentioned, we are engaged in an extensive planning process. Hours and hours, days and days, most of which actually began in the spring. So I'd just like to give you a little taste of that and an overview of what this process looks like. And I expect after we hear from the governor in mid-July to come back to you with our plan for reopening. So we have four guiding principles that we have been holding as our goals throughout the process. And you can read them here. But as you see front and center, it's about the academic, social, and emotional learning of our students, and of course, within a safe environment. We are following the guidelines uh, presented to us from the Center for Centers for Disease Control, Department of Health, and of course, New York State. We are focused on sharing expectations, sharing communications with all of our stakeholders through this process. And uh, most importantly, we have been including district and community stakeholder partners as part of this planning process. As you see, we are at the beginning of July and we are working on all of our plans. We have been holding regular discussions with the Board of Ed and, uh, and small groups of board members. And if you see those white asterisks, they refer to the district community stakeholder group. The district community stakeholder group is comprised of 35 people uh, representing all the stakeholders in Edgemont, some who work within the district and some community members who have expertise uh, in medical professions, uh, health and safety, as well as um, infectious disease. So since we don't know exactly what we will face when we return to school, we have been working on three different scenarios. First is all students return to school with social distancing and health protocols in place. The second is a hybrid model. We don't know exactly what that would be, uh, but we're working on a, a couple of different versions of that, looking at how many students can be in school at any one time and spreading students uh, throughout the entire school building. So, for example, uh, gymnasiums would be used for classes and um, any type of physical activity would be social distance and would be held outdoors. And as a third scenario, all students engage in e-learning. So that, that's how we ended the school year. And that's a scenario we are looking at possibility 
So here's a representation of all of the people and all of the committees who have been hard at work in imagining our reopening. We have 11, you see 11 committees in the uh, yellow rectangles and uh, that uh, important stakeholder group at the bottom in green that I mentioned. So the stakeholder group, as I said, 35 people, mixed representation, including experts in uh, organizational reopenings of, and, and uh, learning and reviewing plans from other states and other countries. And you see our committees who have been working. We have a very active um, academics group, which started work uh, this was probably in the spring. The academics group started. It was a continuation of the work we did to get ready for e-learning and then looked at uh, what we can offer to the students, what has been made available through the summer, some book groups that we've started. And uh, you should have recently received an email from Michael Kirchin about that. That's example, an example of one group that has been working and the uh, composition of that committee is teachers, administrators, and the director of curriculum instruction. You also see the medical group that has been hard at work. Our school physician and our nurses have been collaborating. We were uh, very happy to recently read um, the report by the uh, AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and have been working to order additional equipment as mentioned in that report. Each uh, committee that's at work is working on a re-entry worksheet. They are listing the task, the protocol and plan. This is an example from the mental health and psychologist perspective, looking at how we support students. Again, no matter which uh, scenario that we are functioning under, uh, our, our mental health practitioners and our school psychologists have been hard at work. And again, that work also started in space. Here's a little bit of, about stakeholder group. I, I started by telling uh, some of it that I mentioned about the 35 people. So here is a little bit more uh, about them. And if you look at the questions we started with, the, the first time we met, we started with those, those broad questions on the left in terms of norms of operation, current guidance, how do we structure facilities, and what has been a great outcome of that stakeholder group is we've developed subcommittees or, or sub-meetings uh, to help us really drill down. And in fact, I participated in one with the medical group yesterday so that we could really understand um, what we're going to have to do for, for a safe return. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to remind all parents whose young children might not yet be familiar with wearing masks. Summer might be a good time to find a mask that, that works for your child. Just have a little bit of mask time because we do expect come September, we will still need to be masked The students as well as all of the faculty and staff. So it, it's a good time with your young ones who maybe haven't been wearing masks, if you haven't been out and about much, but, but to start uh, getting them familiar with masks. You can also see regarding the questions in terms of the medical perspective, we've been, we are still learning a lot about quarantining. We are all back, all, all of our uh, district office and school office staff are back for the summer. We have a no visitor policy unless, of course, uh, you have an appointment and we will be following all social distancing and masking protocols this summer. So in closing, all of our groups, the 11 com committees that are working, the stakeholder group, that will meet and give us feedback 
have been very active and very helpful. The more people who are involved and the more subgroups we create, uh, the more information we get that will actually inform our plan. So we recently heard that we will hear from the governor probably mid-July, July 14th, July 15th, about New York State moving into phase four and what phase four will mean. At that point, we will continue our draft plan. We will meet with, we plan to meet the stakeholder group on July 10th to share our draft plan at that point, even before we know what we originally thought that was going to be after the governor. In fact, I'm thinking now as I'm speaking, we might have to move that stakeholder group back a little bit further to give us an opportunity to uh, uh, respond to the governor's message about reopening. Uh, I will just go back to that. Uh, all of the groups that are working, if you think about everything that has to be considered regarding athletics, regarding building operations, health and safety, our protocols for coming into the building. Uh, during the summer, all of our employees are uh, responding to a screening questionnaire before they come to work every morning. So those are all of the new pieces that have to be in place for a safe reopening. I look forward to holding uh, some parent forums so I can hear from you directly. They've been scheduled for, that. It's scheduled for Monday, July 6th at 10 a.m. And the link is on our district website. If you go under the last Edgemont news that I mailed out, and the second parent forum will be held on Tuesday, July 7th at 7 p.m. So I do look forward to continuing the conversation, to hearing your questions, to hearing your uh, concerns, and to make sure that we are addressing all of those as we work to safely reopen Edgemont schools. And now I will turn it over to Board of Education questions. Thank you. Okay, I will stop sharing and uh, thank you for that, Victoria. Um, let's start with uh, does anyone in the board have any questions that they'd like to ask? Jennifer. Uh, do you know how to? Uh, there you go. I got it. Yeah. Um, first, Victoria, I wanted to say. I, I, this is a tremendous undertaking with a lot of moving parts, and I appreciate all the care and attention that everyone is putting into thinking about a very complicated question. Um, I do have one thing that I was hoping maybe one of the subgroups could consider. Um, if we don't go back full time, uh, what can we, and, and by we I mean all of us, do to foster a sense of community among our students. Uh, you know, in the spring, there were certainly bumps in the road, but the teachers had the advantage of working with classes that had a set dynamic. You know, they, they knew their kids, they knew their strengths, they knew their personalities. Uh, in the fall, that's not going to be the case. Um, although certainly it's a large, con uh, the largest concern is with kindergarten and seventh grade cohorts. We're still, all of our students are going to be coming into new classes with new teachers and new groups of peers. And it seems to me that um, it would be good for their social emotional development if we can find a way to create that sense of community. Yeah, you, you raise a great question. And as I'm looking at all of the groups that are working, we actually have a mental health um, psychologist group working, a mental health guidance group working, because we do know that the social emotional pieces are so important. And the conversations that are ha ha being held at the building level in terms of building operations and the academics in terms of how you build that community is very much a part of a, a number of, of different committees, but um, 
I will uh, let Mike Curtin jump in and as well to add to that. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, uh, congratulations, Monica and Jennifer and Alec. Um, yeah, I just thought I would mention that we, you know, we do summer curriculum development projects um, every summer, and uh, one of the ones that's happening this summer is actually focused on the sixth through seventh grade tradition uh, transition. We are actually in the process of putting that together. It will probably happen, I think, on July 27th, where we're going to have teachers coming together from both sixth and seventh grade to talk about that transit transition. Um, the whole program was revamped last year, and that revamp was very successful. But obviously, we have some different circumstances potentially, and so uh, we do have a group looking at that. And in the recent surveys that we did, both teachers and parents indicated that the social emotional well being of their kids when we return is uh, is is really important. And so we're continuing to look at ways to kind of support them and help them to form those uh, relationships with new students and with new teachers uh, in the beginning of the year if we're hybrid or, uh, or completely remote. Thanks. Um, Joe, did you want to add to that as well? Sure. Uh, just to just to let you know that that one of the things that we are going to be talking about uh, as part of the social and emotional learning plan is the idea of how to build community in an in this this era of uh, of distance learning too. Because you make a very good point that these students already had some you know contact with one another and uh you know prior to prior to the shutdown so we do have to start to really look at how we would build that community from the get-go whether we're doing something in a hybrid model or whether we're going to do it from a distance model or whether we're actually going to come back together uh we will be looking at ways to help teachers establish community with their classes and then figuring out other ways to continue those kinds of contacts as as uh as time uh, goes on Does that uh, answer your question, Jennifer? No? Yes, but thank you. I mean, it's going to be an ongoing process. I realize that. This is only the process to plan. We're, we're right. just, this is the process to develop a plan. This is not the plan. <laughs> and, and I just, I do want to point out to you as well that our school psychologists and school counselors uh, play a really uh, important role in establishing community uh, at the school psychologists are certainly at the elementary level and are very connected to all of the classrooms and all of the teachers and that's on an ongoing basis so they're very they're very connected to what uh, really builds strong community within their schools that's not to 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 negate what teachers already know too but we recognize that teachers are coming at this from a very different angle now and uh, so they're going to need some help with that. We have established uh, some social and emotional learning activities at the elementary levels through the Sam Stanford Har Harmony Pro Stanford Harmony program, uh, and some of those activities are going to be looked at, and teachers will be directed to doing to using those to build community. So we already had that all in place prior to all of this going going down. So this is really that opportunity to take the tools that we would, were already using and already had started to use after we looked at our SEL process and really put it to use in a different way. OK, um, Marikita, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I might. So one of the biggest challenges when you have three scenarios is figuring out how to deploy resources across three different potential outcomes. And two of them have distance learning as a part of them. So I guess my question is just what's going on this summer in terms of engagement with teachers and and Mike from from your perspective to kind of learn from the distance learning from the spring and potentially bring in um, new elements of distance learning in the fall and, and kind of take that, that particular piece to the next level, should that be a part of our plan in the fall? So, so I can start and I'm sure Mike will want to jump in, but we have a variety of options this summer um, because as, as you know, not every teacher 
uh, will be participating in professional development all together. Um, however, the the many teachers have been taking um, STI courses on on and, and, and many other uh, graduate level courses as well on different hybrid learning models, different remote learning models, um, building community with students, um, as well as we, we all, all of the administrators were engaged in a, a training on a model of hybrid learning, where including 20 teachers and, and there will be training as well later in the summer. So as, as Mike already said, he is engaged with summer curriculum pro projects and transitions on uh, places that we targeted, that we knew we had to strengthen that we've already been working on. And, and this was an opportunity to, to take it the step further. But there, there are a number of uh, trainings and opportunities going on and they'll continue through the year. So uh, of course we have um, Andrea Nash, who is our, our full-time coach, uh, technology integration specialist. But well, a, a lot of what, um, what Andrea does, it's not just teach the technology or teach the technology tools, it's also focused on the bigger planning. And that, that that's a big part of focusing on what's excellent instruction in the classroom, what's excellent instruction uh, in an e-learning environment, and how do we make, make that transition more smoothly. I didn't know, Mike, if you wanted to. Yeah, no, I don't, to add. no, I don't have too much to add beyond what you said. Um, that's a pretty good summary. But that academics task force um, prioritized uh, a number of different areas where we need to focus on professional learning. And the, the surveys that we did of teachers and of parents uh, were really helpful in pinpointing, for example, the teachers, you know, we asked them to identify areas they wanted to learn more about. And it was really um, telling that um, they had relatively little interest in learning about Google Meets and Flipgrid and all the all the technology tools. The areas they rated as being most interested in were um, instructional strategies, assessment, the not the tools, but really how you organize instruction. And I think that really indicates that you know how far we've come and yet how far we have to go. Um, but, um, you know, we are, we definitely have some areas that we've pinpointed that we want to work on. For example, um, you know, what are we doing with parents and students right at the beginning of the year to make sure that they um, have the technology knowledge and access they need for to sort of access the toolkit for their grade level? Like, that's just a small example. But yeah, we are definitely um, uh, diving in head first um, and, uh, and, and getting very wet in the process. Um, so that's it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, anyone else on the board have any uh, questions or comments about the presentation? Okay, um, I think we have a couple of questions from the community, so we can um, we can take those. Um, I'll read the first one, and I'll let uh, Victoria you can jump in or guide or send it. Uh, the first one says, "Can you give context to your current readiness to start school in person in September and the safety protocols for in-person learning?" size of classes, desk preparation, hallway management, sanitation, et cetera? Um, yes, that's exactly what will be in our plan. And, and uh, the, the explanation tonight was about how we are getting to those details. And, and those uh, numerous committees you saw are looking at that. We have been measuring uh, space between desks. We have been um, ordering all, so many additional uh, sanitizers, equipment, uh, PPE. So uh, that will all be part of our plan, which we will present uh, once we know if we have been uh, cleared to come back to school. Okay, um, next question says, will only parents and students who are part of one of the planning groups have input into the final plan for school opening? Will parents have any input before the plan is finalized other than the two parent forums? 
Uh, so the, the two parent forums are prior to the plan being created. So that that is an opportunity for parents to remind us of certain things that they think we might not be thinking about to add uh, to, to our list of uh, items of which to be aware. Um, once we have a plan and, and once we uh, share that draft plan with the stakeholder group and get feedback from that stakeholder group, then we would do the same thing. We would have a uh, parent forums to receive feedback on that uh, first draft plan as well. I imagine this to be an evolving plan. I imagine that we will have to be flexible, that we will have to be ready to change on a moment's notice. So um, I, I, I do see numerous opportunities um, to have these discussions. Okay, thank you. I'm just looking, it looks like at this point, um, there aren't any currently any more questions from uh, community but um as always you can always if you think of something later you can always just uh email either the administration or the the board and we'll um get back to you um anyone else from the, the board that may have thought of something else um okay um i also once again want to just commend the administration for the thoroughness of you know, as Victoria said, just laying out what the process needs to be to come up with the answers. I and mean, it's an immense undertaking with a tremendous number of variables, the vast majority of which we have no idea what their values <laughs> will end up being. Um, so it's it's almost, you know, it'd be almost overwhelming to even sit down and try and figure out how to plan it out. So I want to give full credit to all of you for, again, what looks like a tremendously thoughtful plan for sort of trying to come up with you know, what do we need to know and what are the answers going to be, because uh, it is certainly daunting. So thank you very much. And as you said, I know this will be an um, uh, ongoing thing. Um, uh, there's another question that did just come in. Will the questionnaire results be shared with the community? I'm assuming that means the feedback on the distance learning that for the end of year. Yes, so I, we have been reviewing and summarizing that data and we don't have a specific uh, time yet scheduled that that we will present that but um, we will be presenting the results of the survey data and it is informing the survey data throughout the e-learning process was helping us to make changes and, and switch and, and and communicate and we will be doing the same thing now with the uh, reopening process um, and mike i don't know if you wanted to add anything to that regarding the survey data. No, nope. um, at some point we will definitely provide a summary and analysis of the data. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, but as, as Victoria said, I mean, that data is helping to inform what the distance learning piece will look like in the fall as it seems highly likely that it will be some component of what we have to do in the fall. So um, it's important that we've said all along that it would be constantly evolving and important to keep it moving forward because it wasn't gonna be something that was just a short term, do it and throw it away kind of situation. It, uh, Alec, if I could just add that it's also important that we are connected and in tune with the other local school districts and the school districts th throughout the county because if there's any type of in part of the time and out part of the time that has to be aligned because there are so many parents who have children in one district teach in another district and and it's uh, it's, it's a really awful snow day 
scenario if at every school or 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 uh, calendar if every school district has a different vacation for example so um, it is something that we're working to align uh, many of the administrators belong to regional study groups and, and groups uh, with their peers in other districts the principals are in principal groups uh, mike curtin is in a curriculum with with other directors and, and assistant superintendents of curriculum, Paul Garifano, other directors of technology. So everyone, all of us have our connections throughout the county and we're trying to also make sure that that hybrid has some type of alignment. Great, thank you. Um, Judy. Um, Victoria, first of all, I'm really glad to hear that you're planning that deeply and far ahead as we consider all of the different things that can happen. Um, one of the things that keeps popping up for me is the degree to which as the weather changes, that will affect the plans. And I'm sure you're thinking about that, um, but will, um, will the fact that we might have uh, classes outdoors for gym and things like that um, in, a, in an effort to distance students have an overall effect on, or what kind of an effect will it have on, on scheduling attendance? So those are so many of the unknowns and the difficult part. So, um, for example, we, we know that for music, students won't be singing indoors or singing next to each other. Um, I, I just read a report that came out from the New York State Music Teachers Association about um, even brass versus woodwind and um, cleaning instruments and, and what type of space you need to even play instruments together. So that's all of what we're reviewing now. But it it certainly will require changes. And, and I think as we look at f athletics, for example, and recreation has been categorized as high risk, moderate risk and low risk. And, and I, we will be looking at the curriculum and curricular areas in a very similar way and, and make uh, modifications accordingly. Anyone else? Another quick look. I don't see any more community questions at the time. Um, well, thank you very much. Obviously, we will be having many more discussions around this um, probably every time we get together. So uh, <laughs> thank you for uh, sort of framing that for everyone and hopefully giving people a, uh, an understanding of how large and complex of process this is and how much thought is being put into it so hopefully that will give people some confidence that we will get to the best answers we can get to you know as we said there's a lot that we will never know and things that will get changed on us by the minute but uh, you know at least this level of planning will help us to you know go into things the best we can and set us up to adjust as things change as we know they will um, i'm told there may be one more question there um, so the question is it's already july will we have time to get this whole weather and <laughs> before early september of course <laughs> it's it, it, I, it, during the time of covid i feel that if we get two days to to reinvent public education, you know, like I feel like, um, no, in, in all honesty, it's a, a Herculean task. The team of administrators and teachers, nurses, uh, community members uh, have been wonderful. And we, we won't know which scenario we're functioning under until, as I said, mid, mid to late July. Um, so that's why we're planning for as, as many to, to be as flexible as we can be. Okay, um, with that, we will um, move on. Um, I can see at least two 
items that I'd like to see pulled out um, in um, G. I, I think it would be appropriate to pull out um, maybe 9 and 14. Um, yes, you know, that'd be great. We want to start with 14. I think Kyle had said that he has something to say there. Sure. Yeah. Um, yes, we, we received a, a, another retirement. Um, Cecilia Coughlin at the Junior Senior High School, and Kyle has a few comments. Good evening, everyone. If you have spent any time in the library at the Junior Senior High School, then you know it is the go to spot for our entire student body. Sheila Coughlin has helped create the supportive, warm atmosphere students have come to expect and love in our library. Sheila is retiring from her position as library assistant at the junior senior high school, a position she has held for 13 years. Retiring was a difficult decision for Sheila because she loves Edgemont, her students, the library, and her colleagues. When asked to share a few thoughts about Sheila, one colleague said, I can remember when Sheila interviewed for the library position. <laughs> I knew immediately that this was the person that I wanted to work with. She came across as nice, sincere, and interesting. I'm really going to miss her. Another colleague shared, Sheila had a common presence in the library, whether it was figuring out the business side of things or working with the many students who found their way to the library, little could get her flustered. An additional <laughs> colleague reflected, Sheila has read many of the books in the library. I've observed <laughs> Sheila approach students and staff as they study the bookshelves to see if they need help. Sheila was always there to make sure people found just the right book. Sheila was tasked to do many jobs in the library and was always reliable and willing to help anyone who had a question. As Sheila begins her retirement, we know that she will enjoy spending more time with her husband and they are both looking forward to traveling once the pandemic is over. Sheila is also looking forward to spending precious moments with her three grandchildren, William, who is seven, Thomas, who is five, and Levi, who is four months old. <laughs> Sheila, you've earned your retirement. We wish you many joyous memories with your husband and family. Congratulations. Um, and then uh, number nine, um, I don't know if you want to say anything, Victoria or Kyle, if not, I, I will. But. Uh, um, do, do you want to take the uh, resolution separately, Ella, or, or mean just to make a comment? You just make comment. It's probably so. so I am very happy to welcome Mary Rose Joseph to the administrative team, to the position of uh, assist the, the leave replacement assistant principal at Edgemont Junior Senior High School. I know that through the interview process, as well as through a professional development experience we all had um, this week together as uh, the new administrative team. Uh, it was a, a joy to work with Mary Rose and I, I look forward to her perspective and her pushing our thinking as a group. Uh, and uh, I'm just so happy to welcome her to Edgemont. Thank you. All right, Kyle, it's my time to play it on you. <laughs> 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 Alec, I think that's more than fair given the number of times I've put you on the bot. <laughs> so I, we're, we're truly excited to have Mary Rose come to Edgemont, uh, whether it's her 22 years of experience um, uh, related to a variety of science classes, her experiences um, co-department chair of the science department, or Horace Greeley, or her position as the director of science research. She's excelled in each of the roles she's held uh, and she's got a ton of perspective to offer having taught for 22 years and we're lucky to have her in Edgemont. Uh, she's already helped out a bunch in the last few days and really looking forward to working with her in, in the coming years. Welcome Great. Mary Rose. Thank you. Um, all right, um, anything else anyone wants to uh, Alec, Alec, if I could just now, I know Mary Rose is in, in uh, the um, call bridge with us, but I, I know that we probably have a number of new teachers who are being appointed this okay. evening who 
who are probably listening listening in. Okay. So I would just like to also welcome and congratulate Kimberly Lim, who will be a probationary teacher at Sealy Place School, Eliana Rojas, who will be a probationary teacher at Greenville School, and Hannah Ottman, also a probationary teacher at Greenville School. And we did welcome a new senior office assistant at Pupil Personnel Services, and um, we look forward to all of all of the new Edgemont family members to joining joining with us. Thank you. And I was just going to say you stole that from me. Welcome to the to the family. <laughs> it really is that. But uh, thank you and welcome all. I look forward to working with you. Um, all right. Do we have anything else before we uh, have the uh, recommendation? Um, all right. I think we're all set for you then, Victoria. Okay, I'd like to ask the board's approval of the personnel items G, numbers 1 through 14, H, students, number 1, I, business, numbers 1 through 5. All right, do I have a motion to approve? I see Marquita and second by Nalesh. Uh, all in favor? Um, we are approved. So congratulations to all. Um, that brings us to the end of the agenda for this meeting. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for a regular Tuesday time frame, July 21st. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry, Marquita, did you have something uh, or is your hand still just up there? Okay. Um, so thank you all. And um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Monica and Marikita, all in favor? Um, we are adjourned and thank you all so much and uh, uh, look forward to working with everyone uh, in, this, uh, in this new year. <laughs> um, all right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Bye.